Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel now. Don't slag the new specs. Once a specy bastard, always a specy bastard. It's not going to change. Um, but today we're here to talk about the Copenhagen game. Tomorrow night as Celtic take on the Danish champions in what is the second leg of the, the Europa League last 32. Last week we obviously headed over to Copenhagen where we walked away with a decent enough result. You could say on paper if you said before the game, or oh, uh, you're a one all draw, you're going to get that today. I would have turned and said, you know what, that's fine. But we spoke about the performance, obviously. We spoke about the complexion of each half and how they differed so much and how... You know, at half time, I felt like we should have won the game already. So it was slightly disappointing at the time, but we still we walked away with a one all draw. And now we go to tomorrow night to Celtic Park, where we look to finish the game uh, and 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 take the the result through that will get us to the last sixteen. Uh, that is the only thing we can hope for from this game because it would be bitterly disappointing if we were to go here tomorrow night back over to Celtic Park and miss out on the chance to play in the Europa League last sixteen. I think we showed last week over the vast majority of the game that we are the better side. We created the better chances. We looked the more dangerous. We just took our foot off the gas in the second half and we made it a lot more comfortable and easy for Copenhagen. And that's how so quickly they got themselves back into the game with an early goal in the second half. If we can avoid, you know, just, you know, taking off the pressure, then I, I don't see any reason why we can't go tomorrow night and win fairly comfortably against Copenhagen. That being said, though, we can't underestimate them. We've slipped up before in the past in Europe very easily, and we can do it again. Now, the Europa League group stage at Celtic Park seen some terrific results. We obviously got the, the win over Cluj, we got the win over Lazio, and uh, we played well in all, all three games, and Ren as well. We played particularly well in all those games. Um, you know, he managed to beat the likes of Lazio in stunning fashion with a 90th minute winner through hard work and perseverance. Um, and honestly, tomorrow all it takes is, you know, start well, get a goal early on. I feel like there'll be no nerves surrounding the game. I feel like the Celtic players have the quality all over the park to get the job done. Um, and that was there was fine examples of that last week. You know, within 20 seconds, Edouard could have went up and made it 1-0. Uh, it could have made it 2-0 not long after. And then we finally did get our goal. And we looked so comfortable and confident on the ball throughout the first half um, which if we're judging off of that performance alone that 45 then the whole game tomorrow at our own stadium with our own fans behind us on our own park uh, we should be able to, to you know dispose of them rather easily but as I was saying, you can't take anything away from them. They look organised, they look tough to break down. This is what they've done in the second half for us. You know, they, they, they figured this out a little bit more. They, they looked a, a lot more structured. Uh, the back line was uh, making it more difficult for Celtic to get in behind as we were so easily in the first half. So they'll know what they have to do tomorrow night. Copenhagen will come over here with a, a rough idea of how we like to play. But the interesting thing is this. I think tomorrow night we're not going to field the same team or the same tactic as what we did last week. I think Neil Lennon will now actually deploy the 3 5 2 in Europe for the first time. I think we're going to get our first look at it in a European game. And honestly, I feel like it is the perfect scenario to do so. Last week, for me, I thought the game was crying out for Lee Griffiths. In the second half, the only thing I could think of was we need Griffiths right now. Obviously, he never travelled for the first leg, he wasn't there. He didn't get to play in the game because of a, a small injury that he picked up back in the team at the weekend and got himself a goal uh, which just shows that he's you know, Griffiths before I feel like when he came back into the team uh, from time to time under Rodgers particularly he would come in and he would struggle it would, because, because of his time off but he came back right with a bang and scored which was fantastic to see but I feel like that game last week was crying out for him in the second half, someone to link up top with Edouard, someone to create with him uh, and it was just a game that I feel like would have suited Griffiths if he was given the opportunity to come on but he couldn't because he was injured so I feel like the chance to have him on with Edouard tomorrow will be terrific uh, and I feel like this is the game we are now going to try the 3-5-2 the reason this being the perfect game is because the odds are significantly in our favour they are the, the, I don't want it once again with all due respect to, to Copenhagen I don't want to overlook them I don't want to write them off I'm not what to come across as the overconfident fan in a situation completely writing off their chances and being completely green tinted specs it's going to be a Celtic win but it is a game where the odds are significantly in our favour. They're a team who have been struggling as of recent. They've just backed from the winter break. Last week we've shown we are the better team. So when you look at it that way, we are the favourite. So in this game, the 3-5-2, which has dominated um, the, you know, football for us over the past you know, four or five weeks since we came back from our winter break, is scoring goals for fun. Uh, it's helping us you know, concede less as well. 
Overall, just a great tactic. If we want to ever try out in Europe, it's better doing it now rather than waiting until the last 16 when we probably have a tougher team to play and we've never tested it in Europe. We've never seen how it goes. So this, for me, is a good tester for moving forward in Europe if we get to the last 16. Uh, and also just to, you know, get goals early in the first half. Because you can always, you know, if the 3-5-2 doesn't work, which I think it will, I have a good feeling that it, it will be work perfectly against Copenhagen. Uh, I think we'll get the goals that we needed, the goals that we lacked in the second half last week. If we can go in the first half, get one or two goals, then there's no reason why we can't change up the second half, go for a more defensive approach, go back to the 4-5-1 or the 4-2-3-1, whatever you prefer. Um, we can go back to that and, and play a lot more deeper and a lot more defensively in the second half just to ensure that we do see ourselves through to the last 16. So I think the game tomorrow is favoured for the 3-5-2. I would like to see the exact same team as the weekend put out, bar, you know, obviously Ryan Christie because he's suspended for this game. Um, I'd like to see that team go out. I don't know if Scott Brown will be back. That's a conversation in itself. Um, but I think the team that we played at the weekend perfectly suited for this. I think it will benefit Frimpong a lot more, uh, especially on the right-hand side, because defensively, he looked like he was lacking last week. He looked like he was a bit out of his depth. But going forward, we know how much he can offer. But in this role, I feel like he has a lot more, um, a lot more chance to be a forward playing fullback while also having someone to help him recover that's more right-sided with between the three centre half, so I think it'll benefit Frimpong more. I think we'll get more creativity out that left hand side um, than we did last week uh, because Christie was playing unnaturally on the left hand side last week. Whereas tomorrow night we could have Taylor over there. Um, I think it's just the perfect opportunity to give it a test run in Europe. And if it doesn't go well, and if nil nil at half time or struggling, or Copenhagen like the better team, or even if we're down one nil, then we kind of change things up and we've got to go for the game a bit more. Uh, and and we can see what's went wrong. We can and Neil Lennon can judge that. I have faith Neil Lennon will, but. If we start it, I don't see struggling. I see us getting a couple of goals in the first half, a goal or two, and um, and taking the game right to them if we play that. So I think that'll you know push them into being a little bit more nervous, a little more frightened, uh, and you know increasing the chance of a slip up. Seeing Copenhagen's part of defensive error which allows us to go because we've seen how many times last week we were able to get in behind that defence. Now with Griffiths and the Dwarf playing even more of a chance and even more chances for goals. So I think that is the perfect way to go about it tomorrow. Um, obviously Scott Brown out for this game, uh, perhaps, maybe, not confirmed. Uh, it could maybe get a miss here because of the injury he picked up in the game last week, silly enough, lunging in and injuring himself. Now, I would love to see Brown come back into the team because I think he's vital for these European games, despite him being slightly hopeless last week, um, especially with that tackle itself. Uh, you know, it's just that whole you know mentality that he brings to the team that for European games is perfect, and I'd love to see uh, him get the start at the weekend uh, tomorrow night if he is available. Now, I I'm a big fan of obviously having in Cham, McGregor, and Rogic, and all, and Christie's obviously gone for this, but. Brown, for me, is just, these are the games he loves for, these are the games we need him, he's there to help dictate the, the kind of, the dynamic of the game for Celtic, and I would like him to be in the team tomorrow, if he's not, I don't think it'll harm us too much, it's, it's diff there's a difference between losing Brown for a, a game like this, and say losing Edward, um, because I feel like Edward is, is really needed for these kind of, uh, uh, Brown, I think, is going to be the biggest loss to Celtic when he retires, and it, it'll be so hard to replace him, but... Edward in these European games when it's a second leg and you need goals, you'd rather Edward there than Brown missing out. So it won't be the end of the world, but ideally Brown is available for selection tomorrow. Uh, now for my team prediction, I, as I've already touched on it, I think we should start the exact same team as we did the weekend, with the exception of Christie having to drop out. If Christie does drop out, then I think we bring Brown back into the team if available. If not, then it'll be Rogic, but let's say it's Brown, and then probably just move uh, in Cham or, Ro uh, in Cham or uh, McGregor into the more advanced role, um, probably uh, in Cham, and have McGregor and Brown sitting as the two kind of defensive central midfielders in the 3-5-2. For me, though, I think the job should be done. Uh, I think tomorrow night, there's no reason to indicate that Celtic can't win this game. There's no reason that we, you know, based off that performance last week, that we can't get the job done. Um we looked at the better team for the large post of the game uh, and obviously we could have went into this a very different scenario we had to rely on big Fraser Foster to make a, a penalty save um, fantastic stuff from him again and, and hopefully we just don't you know let any errors come into the team any complacency complacency will be the main message uh, I imagine from Neil Lennon and, and the coaching staff because it only takes moments like that you know switch off and we've gave away a penalty and we've gave away a cheap goal and we've done it in Europe time and time again some of the cheap goals we've given away in Europe has been unbelievable and it, it can really change the the whole story of a season and, and for the European campaign and we can't allow that to happen tomorrow uh, I'm confident we've seen ourselves in the draw on Friday for the last 16 
I don't want to be overconfident, but they filled me with faith last week we could get the job done. So that is why uh, I'm rooting for a Celtic 2-0 win. I'm going to go for 2-0, and I think both goals will come in the first half, and then, as I said, I think we'll sit off a little bit, let the game just kind of, you know, go stale, a little bit slower, pass the ball around. Uh, I don't think that there's any point in wasting the energy if we're up 2-0 at halftime, but more, the more goals, the merrier. Who's to complain at that? Uh, let me know what your thoughts and predictions are in the comments below, your opinions to my opinions. Uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff, as you know, and uh, I hope you enjoy the new specs. I know, it's a bit different. Anyway, see y'all next time.